There you go, buddy. All right, welcome back, guys. So today we're gonna talk about whether or not alligators feel pain. So I just had somebody ask me this. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen that video where the crocodile gets his arm ripped off by the other crocodile and just doesn't react. And everybody's like, oh, they don't feel pain. Yes, they do. But they do have an insane pain tolerance. And when I've seen alligators and crocodiles fighting, yeah, they don't show weakness when they're in a fight. That would be not advantageous for them if they were to show weakness or anything like that. So they don't show it, but we know that they feel it. And just the fact that they will avoid things that are painful implies that they do feel pain. But just because they don't show it in a way that we perceive it leads a lot of people to think, oh, they don't feel pain then. Absolutely they do, but they also, again, have this crazy pain tolerance, which is something that you can learn to do, you know, like as a human within reason, you can learn to tolerate extreme levels of pain that would have somebody else screaming. But if you learn to control your mind and your body, you can have a high pain tolerance. You know, there's great variability among people and what they would consider to be, you know, a 10 out of 10 pain if you're in the hospital or something like that, right? These are things that we have talked about on uh, other videos that we've done in the past too, but I just wanna hit that again, just because I get a lot of people asking that. I was doing my underwater gator tours with Casper today, which by the way, you can come do a tour, little commercial part. Come do a tour, hang out with me and Casper, doing the tours on Saturdays only right now here at Everglades Outpost in Homestead, Florida. I have all the booking info and everything on my website, Crocodile chris.com but i had there's a lion and a donkey there's a donkey a mule a lion and a car alarm going off right now all kinds of fun stuff in the background but anyways um the person doing my tour today asked you know do they feel pain um i know they heal so well what about their pain tolerance you know all this kind of stuff right um now unfortunately not feeling pain has been something that has been used in the past to justify inflicting pain on a lot of different animals and even on different groups of people that's been used in very uh, racially charged situations where they say, oh, they don't feel pain. Or, you know, with animals, oh, they don't feel pain either, so don't feel bad about killing them, don't feel bad about abusing them. Really, really awful, terrible stuff that's been done uh, to all different groups of people and animals in the past. But as far as the alligators go, it is very easy to assume that they don't feel pain when you see them, you know, get their arm ripped off and it seems like they don't even react. Um, but you know, again, they absolutely do feel, but they don't also express it in a way. Like, what's he gonna do? Ah, my arm! Like, he's not gonna cry and scream, you know? Like, he's not gonna like step on a leg going, ah! Like, you know, it's not what they do. So in their case, um, what I'll often see them do is avoiding things that are painful, obviously. Uh, but I can give you some weird stories that I have seen that are just like, what? Like, don't really make sense. But uh, so I've seen an injured alligator covered in fire ants all over them, all over their face, like biting them in their eyes and like crazy. Like they, that's gotta be super uncomfortable, but they don't seem like, they don't seem like they care. Like they could just go in the water and get the ants off of them. So that's one that I don't understand. Obviously I'm not in his mind. I don't know exactly what he's feeling. Casper, come, we're gonna back over here. So I don't know exactly what's going on in his brain. Like if he's being chewed on by fire ants, why doesn't he avoid that, you know? Um, which, I mean, not him, it wasn't him, but just, you know, just to say like, I don't understand that. You know, obviously I don't know everything either. Come, but uh, just trying to give some examples um, of what would lead people to think like this. Um, another one is one of the crazier stories. I think I've said this before in other videos, but either way, um, one time there was a new alligator that came in uh, at a different park and it was a new rescue alligator, you know, nuisance gator caught out of the wild. So we don't know anything about anything before the moment it was caught and it came in perfectly normal. It was, you know, super like trying to bite you, super defensive, um, came in totally normal, nothing weird about it at all. And then within like a few hours of it being there, you notice this smell. Now the smell wasn't there when I first got there. You notice this smell of like rot. And you're like, what is that smell? And you could tell it was coming from that gator, but you couldn't really tell like what, what was wrong. And, and the like, I don't know, like the next morning right here at the base of the tail, this skin was turning white and flaking off. And then the smell was emanating from that point. And then like, it was like oozing, like within hours and it was like oozing stuff. Like it was disgusting. Like very clearly it came from looking completely normal. And then the tail skin flaking off and then this overpowering smell of rot coming from the tail. Alligator showed no sign of anything wrong though. You know, like 
like he didn't act like he was in pain is what I'm getting at, you know, but absolutely something super wrong with him right there. Um, and then the other alligators could smell it too. And uh, alligators are cannibalistic. So if one of them is not doing well, and if one of them is dying, they will eat him. And that's exactly what's happening. The other alligators were coming over and just staring at this gator. They could smell the rock coming off of it. Like, oh dude, he's gonna die, we're gonna eat him. And so they're coming over, they're checking him out. And then they were coming over and then like, they would start trying to bite his tail, like slowly, like, cause if he's okay, like they're not gonna like, straight up murder him but like if he's on the way out so they're like gingerly kind of like biting the back of the tail like are you are you dead yet can i eat you yet you know and that gator wouldn't really respond like it didn't try to fight back at all it would just let them like come over and try to like chew on him one of the weirdest things i've ever seen in my many years of working with alligators was that situation and the cause of that we never found out the only speculation that i have maybe it got bit by a venomous snake like right before it got caught. I i don't know, like I literally can't think of anything else that would possibly cause something like that. Now, alligators do eat venomous snakes though. Um, and I assume they get bit when they're trying to kill it. I don't know. I don't know if they have any tolerance. I don't know if anybody's done any work on this kind of a thing, but super weird, crazy. Um, I assume maybe that's the only thing I can literally think of because it was such a strange and rapid, super rapid progression from like, totally fine within 48 hours it died and it just it went downhill so quickly and like the raw it was so strange so i got like like water on my nose sorry i keep on touching my nose but um but anyways it was a really weird situation Casper, come i'll give him another treat so if i don't like if i'm not like giving him treats he's like he just wanders away <laughs> it's funny but um he's like yeah you guys are boring now but uh so i got these little gator chow biscuit pieces uh it's like ground up chicken and fish and beef made into a pellet for him so i just give him little pieces keep him hanging out but, so that was one of the most strange medical scenarios. Casper, come, come. Yeah, he's coming up behind George there. Come. I'm trying to get him to turn. Come on here. There you go. Come. Good boy. There you go. He missed a piece of it there. But yeah, so that was one of the weirdest uh, medical situations I've personally witnessed. Um, and also it does speak to the pain tolerance thing though, because this alligator, it didn't react at all. And obviously it must've been an excruciating pain. So it is easy to lead someone to believe that, oh, then it doesn't feel pain. It's like, well, also they have to express themselves in a way that is perceptible to a human in our very limited capacity of perception. We have so much hubris as human, uh, as humanity does. We have so much hubris and arrogance of thinking that like, if we can't perceive it, then it doesn't exist. And it's like, what, what are you talking about? Like our ability to perceive our environment is incredibly limited, especially compared to other animals that can pick up on things that is impossible for a human to pick up on. So in our very, very limited uh, way of perception, if we don't perceive it, then it must not exist, right? So if we can't tell that it's in pain, then it's not in pain. It's like, well, you know, they're probably um, expressing that in a way that we're unable to pick up on right we have this very myopic viewpoint on this whole subject which brings us to another animal a lot of people talk about doesn't feel pain are fish and that i'm going to defer to george he's on camera right here but uh george has a live experience in fish so wh what do you got so basically i was raised on yep. fishing right and it was always a point of contention with me yep. because you know i always liked animals and it would slowly wear away at my uh morality because i yep. would put holes in these animals faces and all the time I would ask my dad and friends like do you ever think that what we're doing is kind of wrong and they're always like nah not really they, they feel pain differently and I'm always like how so because they do generally react now they won't scream at us and I feel like fishing would be very different if fish could yell but uh there are obvious reactions so when fish gets hooked in its mouth, it obviously freaks out and tries to run away. And also, uh, some other rather uh, intense practices that people do with fish to uh, put them down quickly, they will stab them in the head or something along those lines, and sometimes they miss or don't kill it immediately, and the animal will obviously flail about in excruciating pain. But I guess that's just kind of a way for some people to feel better about themselves, well, it, I guess. It justifies what you're doing. It's like, oh, I'm not a bad guy. They don't feel pain. I don't have to worry. I don't have to feel bad about making this animal suffer because it doesn't feel pain, you know? 
And that's just a mindset that a lot of people have to justify mistreating something, you know? And it's just really sad and depressing, you know? <laughs> imagine, I. most of my analogies are, imagine you're an alien, okay? <laughs> and that's how, my, that's how my brain works. And I'm always like, imagine you're an alien and you abduct a human and you're poking holes in them and they're screaming, you know, as a human, you're screaming at the top of your lungs, help me, stop, you're hurting me, all these things. And all the alien hears is, me, 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 like, what does that mean? He's not even talking. Like, he's just making sounds. Like, they communicate telepathically. He's not saying anything to me telepathically, so he must not be in pain. Like, how ridiculous does that sound? So that's what we do to animals. We're like, if you could just snap your fingers and, and like, magic, and you could allow animals to speak, I think everybody be vegetarian overnight. You know, you're going to be out there slaughtering pigs when the pig is screaming, help you're hurting me why are you hurting me why are you doing this to me if animals could speak and, and articulate how they're feeling to people now pigs do scream though oh my god pig scream it is horrific when just when we have to trim our rescue pigs hooves you feel like you're murdering them and they you feel so bad you're just trimming their hooves it's something that has to be done for their health you feel so bad about that but imagine if it was why are you hurting me why are you doing this to me you know like i think People's perception on animals would change dramatically overnight if animals just could, again, magically in this scenario, suddenly be able to speak or, or even telepathically communicate how they're feeling, right? Which, uh, if we keep this up with current events, if you guys have seen Neuralink, is being used in humans like first human trials that kind of thing and uh, supposedly Neuralink is going to allow people to communicate telepathically without words you'd be able to talk to somebody based on how you feel you could transmit your feelings to someone else it is absolutely going to go on some animals like there's no i mean i'm sure it already has but it is just first being put into humans right now so imagine put it in animals and then they can telepathically communicate to a human through Neuralink. And then suddenly we realize how horrifically we have been treating animals because we think that we are somehow different because they can't communicate in a way that we can understand. You know, it's just this crazy argument that like, oh, they're lesser. And so we can abuse them and do horrible things to them. Um, and it's in reality, it's the fact that we are lesser in our ability to perceive how they're feeling. Like the irony of that situation is not lost on me. And it's just really bizarre. And that's what, I mean, I'm not trying to be preachy. I want people to do whatever they think is the best and the best choice for them. But for me, that's one of the biggest motivations for me that I stopped eating meat over a decade ago. Because the more time I spent with any kind of animal, the more I was able to pick up on their feelings, on how they act, how they, how they think, how they feel. And I was like, oh my God, like there's really very little difference between like me and an alligator or me and a pig or me and a chicken. The more time you spend with any of these animals, now obviously there are differences, I'm not trying to be a crazy person, but like the more time you spend with any kind of animal, the more you're like, wow, there's really not as much of a difference as what I thought or what society taught me to think. And I really feel for this animal and I really like, I don't want them to suffer. They do suffer, they do feel, they do, feel and think and behave just like we do and we are just like them and so that is a huge thing that made me just stop eating meat and i'm like wait so i'm having an animal suffer a horrific life in factory farming to be brutally murdered just so i can experience the taste on my tongue for a couple of seconds and that's justified like i'm going to choose to make this animal have an entire existence of pain and horrible suffering and be murdered just so i can feel a sensation on my tongue for a few seconds or because I live in this society, I can choose to eat something else that doesn't cause suffering and pain and trauma. That's what really motivated me right there. It was like, I live in a position where I can do this. Now, again, I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm not trying to be like a zealot. Uh, if I was stranded on an island, I'm absolutely killing things to survive and I'm gonna eat them. Like, that's survival. But because of our current socioeconomic status and where I live and the lifestyle I have, I can choose to have an existence that doesn't cause that pain and trauma. So that, that is what I personally do. And I am not, again, I don't wanna be preachy. I don't want people to get mad at me or, or be crazy about it, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, just understanding, I don't I don't want him going out. He, when he goes under, he starts getting kind of creepy and trying to bite my feet and I don't want that. So, so I'm gonna bring him up. Casper, come. I'll give you another little treat, buddy. Come. Now it's also interesting having this conversation while sitting in front of an obligate carnivore that 
has to eat meat to survive. And it's, I, I think about this too, if we're getting kind of philosophical here, I do think about like, you know, humans are omnivores. We can choose to not eat meat and be okay. He can't do that. And so now thankfully he doesn't have the higher cognitive functions to be able to worry about what other animals are feeling like what we do. So for him, this conversation is moot and it doesn't affect him. Um, but I do think about it where I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm so glad that I'm not an obligate carnivore and that like my very existence does imply other things have to die. I can make that choice. But if you think about it for him, like, oh man, yeah, that's like, hmm, kind of, kind of weird thing to think about. But anyways, to reel this thing whole back, um, back to the pain tolerance idea and just that you know all animals as far as we know do feel pain different animals can feel things in different ways and different things do have pain tolerances but to be alive you kind of have to have some sort of ability to feel pain to avoid things that will kill you i mean that's where this pain arises from is like you put your hand on a hot stove it hurts because your your body's telling your brain like hey, stop doing the thing that's destroying cells and it's gonna make us die. We don't wanna die, so stop doing that thing. It costs you pain, right? So uh, as far as I know, all animals feel pain. Again, varying degrees on the spectrum of how they handle that pain or, or how, uh, how they tolerate it, but as far as I know, everything does. Come, come here, Casper. I'm gonna grab a little piece of the tree over here. I don't know, what do you think, George? You got anything else important? Well, I would talk a little bit more about, you know, you being able to read their body language, because you know, that is something that you have a skill in that most other people can't. So you could, in a way, I don't want to say talk to them, but they're able to convey stuff, well, con convey feelings in another way. I can perceive what he's thinking. Um, and that's, yeah, right, okay, so that's a good way to put it. So like, because of the amount of experience I have with these animals, I'm really good at perceiving through his body language a pretty good idea of what's going through his head. So that's what allows me to be so good at what I do with them is because I'm really good at predicting what they're gonna do next because of the amount of experience that I have and kind of the analytical way that I study them to understand them and understand what they want, what they don't like, and that behavior allows me to predict what they're gonna do, right? So it allows me to perceive in a way that most people can't because they don't have that experience. You know, it's not that I'm special, it's the time put in, you know? Um, what makes it special is also thinking what about what he's thinking about, which it sounds silly. Um, I put this on one of my stories the other day. Somebody asked, what's the best advice you can give for somebody who wants to work with animals? And I said, putting yourself in someone else's shoes or some other creature's shoes. And it sounds silly, but that is what is missing for many people. They have too much, again, too much hubris, too much arrogance, and we automatically devalue anything that's not us. And so we assume that they don't feel things in the way that we do, or they can't think in the way that we do, because we automatically discount anything that's not human as being lesser than, and then therefore unable to do anything a human could do. So breaking that mold, getting away from that mentality and just literally putting your mind in his position and like, what would I do if I was the alligator? How would I perceive the situation? How would I react to things if I was him? Oh, I would never, uh, I wouldn't think that way because they're dumb and I'm smart. So I don't think they would do that. Throw that out the window. Stop thinking like that. Now, obviously there's a huge cognitive leap between an alligator and a human. I'm not trying to be crazy. I'm not trying to say that, but I am saying that they are way smarter and way more intelligent and complex than what most people give them credit for. And that that kind of devaluing of, of what they're capable of makes people make incorrect assumptions and then you get your arm ripped off because you didn't think he was smart enough to anticipate what you were gonna do. And they absolutely can't, you know? Um, now, because of that experience, when I see them, a lot of times I can tell like there's something off. Even if I can't, properly articulated. Sometimes I see things that like, it's almost like my subconscious sees it, but I don't see it and I can't tell you what I can see, but sometimes I can see something is off and I know something's weird, but I can't even tell you what I see. Um, and so it just feels off to me, you know? And that's kind of like, I don't know, like my subconscious picks up on things that they are giving off that like, I don't know how to articulate, but either way. So I have seen alligators where I'm like, something's off. Like he's being weird, something's wrong with him, you know? And, uh, and those are situations where like, then I will adjust my behavior because I'm like, 
he looks like he might be in pain or he might be upset about something and therefore he may not react in a normal way that I would expect him to. And so I need to be aware of those things so I don't get myself hurt by the animal, you know? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sometimes, or like, you know, if you ever like accidentally step on one's foot, you'll see him flinch, you know, you'll see him yeah. react. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one it is really easy to accidentally step on their toes when you're working close around them and they're chill you know they're they're really calm and everything and you step on his toe and spin around you know like if he's well if he's feisty you know and he's like feeling threatened he might spin around and try to bite you um or i also know other alligator handlers that want to make the alligator look more aggressive and would purposefully step on their toes and like grind their heel into the alligator's toe to hurt him and cause pain to make the animal squirm and look more dangerous for their for their show so that's like yeah. not cool you know so I, i've known known some people that do that kind of thing um what, what else what else we got you here? could also probably pull that in with dogs since people just generally are around dogs more they understand them better and it's easier for them to make those connections so not only that but the fact that dogs have been bred to properly exhibit their feelings in a way that is perceptible to humans. So through artificial selection, we chose to breed dogs that could communicate on a way that we understand better. Isn't that interesting to think about? So I got him on my foot right here. You know, again, once he goes under, he cracks his mouth open and he's gonna start feeling around and trying to bite. Can, can we not do that? Hi, Casper. Can you, can you not try to bite me, please? See, look at him, look at him. Let's not do that. Oop. Mm. He, yeah, he's being a little creep right now. Hey, knock that off. What are you doing? Bonk. But, um, but anyways, yeah, so, I mean, that is a really cool thing I want to talk about. There you go. Have a little treat. Chew on that. Um, but yeah, so, through artificial selection, um, you know, we took wolves and we basically made them into dogs. We domesticated wolves and through that artificial selection, we definitely chose dogs that could communicate with us better. Not even purposefully, but it makes them more cute, <laughs> you know? And so their ability to communicate with us was basically genetically engineered through that artificial selection. And so that's why your dog understands you so well and you can understand your dog so well but it wouldn't translate the same with like a wolf or something like that. You know, it's really cool and interesting. And then people are like, well, could you do that with alligators? Can you, can you domesticate alligators? That's a video we've done before, but um, we'll talk about it really quick. Yes, you could. It would just take, you know, a couple hundred or thousand years to do it. But you could selectively breed them and be able to read them better and be able to understand how they're thinking better if you were to do that to kind of tailor it towards human perception, right? That makes sense, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Any any other input, George? Uh, I'm trying to get George to interact in the videos more, guys. Yeah, I'm bad at speaking. <laughs> Yeehaw. Anything else? No, I think that's good as far as I know. Okay, cool. Well, you know, I guess we'll wrap this one up then, guys. Thanks for watching. You know, uh, let us know in the comments what you think, what your input is, uh, any other video ideas you'd like to see us talk about. And as usual, you know, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.